Welcome back. In this video, we're going to work through an example of uh, finding the image of a set. The problem is this. Let's suppose that S is the closed disk with radius 1 centered at the origin. Uh, so in other words, this region that's shaded there, including the origin, or sorry, including the, uh, the boundary. We want to find the image of S uh, under the function f shown here. 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z. All right, in order to do this, uh, we're going to use those steps that we outlined in the previous video. Specifically, we're going to start by looking at where the boundary of our set S gets mapped under the function f. We'll do that by parameterizing the boundary. We'll find the uh, real and imaginary parts of our function f, and we're going to plug the parameterization into the function f. And what we'll get will be a, a parameterization of the boundary of the image. And then we'll decide which region um, of the W plane corresponds to the image of S. Walking through that, what we're going to do start uh, at first is, is take the boundary of our disk, which is this circle with radius 1, and we're going to parameterize that. So using a parameterization that's uh, fairly common for these types of problems, we're going to let x be the cosine of t, y be the sine of t, and we're going to let t range from 0 to 2 pi. Um, now, as t ranges from 0 to 2 pi, this will sweep out the entire unit circle. Now, we mentioned in the previous video that you don't necessarily need to follow those three steps in that order. So I'm going to give an example by actually working out the third step right away. We're going to take this parameterization of the boundary circle. We're going to plug that straight into the function f. Now remember, z is equal to x plus i, y. So when I put cosine and sine in for x and y, and put that uh, in for z, I'll get this expression here. 1 plus the cosine of t plus i times the sine of t, all over 1 minus the cosine of t minus i times the sine of t. Now the second step is also necessary, so we'll look at that next. As I take a look at my, my function, I'm going to want to separate this expression into the real part and the imaginary part. Now the problem I have right now is that the uh, denominator mixes real and imaginary parts, and when I divide by a mixed uh, complex number like this, um, it's a little bit hard to see what will be the eventual real and eventual imaginary part. So what I'll do is uh, make the denominator real by multiplying through the fraction, both the top and the bottom, by the conjugate of the complex number on the bottom. That looks like, um, like this. We'll take um, 1 minus the cosine of t plus i sine of t, times that onto both the top and the bottom. Now on the bottom, that will create 1 minus 2 cosine of t plus cosine squared of t plus the sine squared of t. The bottom becomes a, a real expression. Uh, it is a little bit messy, but it's real. Now on the top, I'm going to multiply these two together, and I'm going to separate out the real part of the result and the imaginary part. They each get their own copy of the denominator. And now I can simplify. And one uh, key is this trigonometric identity. Whenever you have a cosine squared plus a sine squared, that will equal 1. And so over here in the denominator, we'll have a 1 plus another 1, which will create a 2. There's another 2 and a 2 there, so I can factor a 2 out. Now over here on the left, in the numerator, we'll have, we have 1 minus a cosine squared minus a sine squared. And since the, these two combine to make a value of 1, we'll have 1 minus 1. And the real part actually turns out to be 0. So separating f of z into real and imaginary parts, we end up with uh, 0 plus i times this expression. Now remember, t is allowed to range from 0 to 2 pi. So what I'm going to do is plot these points on my uh, complex uh, plane, on the w plane, let t run from 0 to, to uh, 2 pi and see what that looks like. Now as you take a look at this, um, this expression becomes undefined actually as, as t equals 0. So we'll take a look just as what happens as t approaches 0. And as you do that, you may have to use L'Hopital's rule or, or some other tricks from calculus you'll see that this expression is going to approach positive infinity. Now this expression is what is times on i, while 0 is the real part. So we'll be plotting points on the boundary that have a real part of 0, but their y-coordinates 
are going to be increasing larger and larger. Uh, we'll be on the imaginary axis, but we'll be way high up there as t is close to zero. Now on the other hand, as t approaches two pi, but is less than two pi, uh, the cosine will have a value that is uh, slightly less than uh, uh, than one. So one minus the cosine will be a positive number, but the sine is going to be a negative number. They're both approaching zero, um, and if we use L'Hopital's rule, we'll see that this expression approaches minus infinity. And so we'll be talking about points whose real part is zero and whose imaginary part is minus infinity. And so as, as t varies from zero to two pi, you'll be talking about a boundary curve that travels along the imaginary axis from positive infinity down to minus infinity. What that means is that the imaginary axis itself is the boundary of the image of this shape. This circle with radius one will get mapped to the imaginary axis. To finish the problem, we just have to decide what about the points inside the circle? Where do they get mapped? This boundary um, is the boundary of what? Is, are these image points on the left or are they on the right of the, uh, the imaginary axis? Well, to answer that last question, we're gonna take a test point. We're gonna take a point inside the set S put it into the function and see where in the complex plane, in the W plane, its image is. Now one of the most uh, easy choices for the test point would be the point zero. So if I take z equals zero and I put it into the function, I will uh, arrive at f of zero equals one. So the point zero gets sent to the point one on the real axis and other points around zero will get mapped to points around one and so the image of the disk will actually turn out to be the set of points on the right-hand side of our boundary, which we determined to be the imaginary axis. In this way, we've been able to determine the image of the disk. It is the, uh, the right half plane. All right, now in regards to other problems here, some of your homework problems will involve not necessarily a region, but just a curve. In those cases, You'll follow the same steps as before, except for this last one. If you're just worrying about a curve and not necessarily a region, you won't have to use test points to decide a region. Once you figure out where the curve gets sent, you'll, you'll know your answer at that point. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll see you later.